Welcome back to the channel. Another day of working on the tractor, as always, and the way it's been lately. And I've been trying to work on this as much as possible because obviously spring's coming probably quicker this year than last, which is great. That's fine. So the thing that I want to jump on to today is probably stuff with this head because I started it just to kind of see how things are, you know, would come apart and how easy they would come apart. And the only issue that I'm having trouble with is the guides. Everything else, the valves, the springs, all that stuff, not too bad at all. But I'm having trouble getting the guides out and I'm starting to think that they're gonna probably need pressed out somehow. So I'll have to deal with that and figure out a way. I do have a shop press, so, or have access to one. So if you watched last video, and if you didn't, you can check that out. But if you did, you've seen that we got all remaining pistons, well, all the pistons in, I should say. We got the remaining sleeves put in and then we installed all the pistons. So this part should be done. They're all torqued, connected to the crank. So that's a huge plus. We're getting headway there. Biggest thing now is, like I was saying, is getting the head where it needs to be. So we're gonna jump on probably just removing the rest of these springs and the valves and everything, the rest of the way out through here, and then see what we need to do to try and get those out. Because a lot of times you can beat them out or pound them out with like a punch or something, but it's not really working. I've tried using these and it's just kind of destroying it. So that didn't work. I may, again, I may have to press them out because otherwise you'll just end up breaking them. too bad removing all of those and now I just have all the guides left and one thing that I did find which I kind of had a feeling that's what a problem was the valve seals were all shot so you know they weren't really letting oil down in the guide very much you know there's not much going on that way but it definitely was letting oil up in there and you know we were getting a lot of smoke on startup so definitely some leaky valve seals going on they were all completely trashed so I did find that otherwise nothing really stood out to me other you know some of these are more carboned up and obviously cylinder one and two were worse than the rest of them so at this point, I have to figure out somehow to get these valve guides out, you know, without breaking them. And I'm thinking the best thing is probably gonna be somehow press them out, but I gotta kind of figure that out and see what's gonna work best because the downfall is that they are at an angle. It's not a flat head. So I could prop a board on the one side, take it up and, you know, press them out on the shop press. That would probably be the easiest and most efficient way to do it. And ultimately, you know, if you stick a valve in here, there is some play. I mean, you don't want it tight, tight. And they're probably fine. But in our kit that we have, we have brand new valve guides and everything. So it's kind of silly right there is one. It's kind of silly to not change the guides while you have everything out and it came in the kit. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. So I got the press here and the head. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do this. Obviously this thing is too long to fit in between this, which it wouldn't work anyway because I need to have it centered. But the ones that are really gonna Okay, whatever that was. <laughs> the ones that are really going to be tough are going to be the end ones here because you're going to have to have it in sideways. So I might have to use the ladder to try and help me out with that. 
So somehow, and I, I got to kind of crib the thing up because these are at an angle. It's not a completely flat. The head's flat, but the way the guides go down in, everything's kind of at an angle. So it kind of throws a curveball. I think I can block it up with a piece of wood. Again, this is just going to be screwy. So I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work yet. Okay, so there was a loud pop. And... I thought something broke, but it actually broke loose the guide. So this is very difficult for me to try and show you guys just because of the angles of everything. I can't get light down in there. But this one that we are trying is starting to come out. It's starting to push down. I don't know if you can see it very well from up in here. Actually, yeah, you can see it. I don't know if that's picking it up or not, but it is coming out. So it does appear that this will work, but it took some serious pressure, which explains why they won't come out with just beating the things. And there it is. So there is one guide. So, interesting. And that one that we just pushed out would have been, I believe, an intake. Is there a mouse? Is there a rat under there? Find it. Is it under there? Now it's gonna get worse as we have to go out and back in because it's going to, really the weight's gonna be hanging out for <laughs> her. She cracks me up. There it was. So here's where I'm at currently. I got about half of them out minus this broken one because I tried to pound that one out and it broke so I'm not sure what the deal is with that one but one two yeah one two three four five of them are out two four we got six and then with this one we got seven I think I'm just gonna call it a day for right now because I'm to the point where I don't really have the proper tools and quite honestly you know these things and they're pro these aren't designed for this, but they're junk. So I'm just getting kind of irritated and very frustrated at this point. The press is working fine. It's just having the proper tool to press them out. And it's just, it's really driving me nuts. So I'm just going to call it a day for right now. Call it quits and I'll regroup myself, come back with a clear mind and then try and attack these and maybe I can come up with a better tool or get something else. But for right now, this is just where it's gonna stand. I soaked the head in some warm water. That got it a lot cleaner than it was, but there's still definitely some on here. I put the guides in the freezer, so I'll probably wait to do them. I have to find out some information on them anyway, so. Probably find out that and then we'll resume this tomorrow. And then at that point, we should be able to reassemble this head pretty quickly once we get the valve guides in. It is time to officially put in the new guides. I started to put this one in. I'm just using a pin punch with a washer. It's actually going in pretty easy. You know, it's got a long ways to go yet, but get this put in and hopefully I don't need to ream out at the top here. Hopefully it doesn't mushroom it. And according to my little manual here, exhaust 
which is what that one is, needs to be 0.81 to 0.87 inch height above spring recess. So I got the micrometer. We'll get that set to where we can measure. And most of these are probably going to be flush-ish on the bottom, roughly. Definitely going a lot easier pressing in than it was pressing out. I definitely have a system kind of worked out now it seems. So I got one exhaust in and two intakes. So now we're moving back to exhaust. And then so two exhaust, two intake, two exhaust, two intake, and then one exhaust at the end. I think I'm gonna call it a night. For right now where I'm at, gotta do the feeding yet. And I think we're moving. We're moving, we're getting somewhere. And I'm happy about that. Because getting these old ones out was a pain in the butt. Now putting new ones in is definitely a lot easier. I really wouldn't have to press them in because they actually go in pretty easy with you know hammering them in the way I was. And I do heat up this bore a little bit. And these are in the freezer, so that probably plays a little bit of a part on it. But I feel it's just easier to press them a little quicker, and you don't necessarily risk as much that you could mushroom those or anything. Really, I don't think I would anyway, because it really isn't taking that hard of hits to do it, and I have a flat washer on the entire thing. So I don't think it is, but either way, this is here and this is up here, so we're going to make use of it. So three down, a bunch more to go. I can finally say the valve guides are done. That's a huge weight off my shoulders. There's still a ton to do, but that was really not a lot of fun. This went easier and faster than trying to remove the old ones did, but still, I'm glad it's done. So now the head needs cleaned up a little bit more, definitely on like the mating surfaces and then we can assemble basically all the valve systems, the springs, valves, keepers, all that stuff. And then hopefully we can soon get this back on the tractor. So that is a huge plus. I'm making some progress slowly. Basically have the head for the most part cleaned up. I have thought about trying to do like maybe a port and polish on this thing, but I don't know if I'm really going to mess around with doing that or not. But the mating surface is here, pretty clean. And cleaned up kind of inside here where the valves and everything go to. So now I got to try and assemble everything with the head, with to put the valves and everything in. And probably try to, you know, lap them and stuff to get them to seat. But so far, I'm happy with how it's looking. And yes, I do have ripped gloves again. A lot of you have pointed it out. And they're junk. They're literally junk. You touch it at all and they just disintegrate. So it's kind of pointless, but I'd rather just have it on my fingertips than my entire hand, I guess. Is, I don't know. Well, everything was going smoothly. We have come across the little snag in the process. And I don't understand why, I can't understand for the life of me why. So I ordered the valve kit. I've been kind of ordering a bunch of parts from Allstate's Ag and or ASAP tractors, whatever you want to call it, and Steiner. So here's an exhaust and an intake. So this is an exhaust. And here's an intake valve. Now, obviously it's hitting the table, that's why they're not going down, but so Exhaust valve is fine. Intake valve on the other hand, if we grab one of the intake valves here and we set it on top, you can see the problem. It's a much bigger valve. Now, it said, and this is what kind of contradicted itself, it said on Steiner's website, you know, these valves can be used with a 1.78 inch 
valve seat or intake valve seat. Well, the C21, C221 heads for these engines only have replaceable seats for the exhaust side. The intake side is machined in to the head, so you can't you can't just pop that out and change it. You know, obviously this needs to be drilled and reamed out bigger. So, and I don't know why they do that. This came from Steiner and they sent it's bigger valves and you have to send this out to a shop and have them drill it out bigger. Where if I would have just ordered this kit from All States Ag, which is where I got the rebuild kit and everything else, and the gaskets, this set came from the, the valve seals. This came with the seals. But in finding the gaskets for everything that came with the All States Ag, it came with the valve seals as well. So I should have just ordered it originally and now i have the valve guides in here now so they probably ain't going to take it back and if they would they would charge me at least the valve guides which is understandable and then i'd have to buy the other kit so i'm gonna end up spending more money in it anyway but it contradicted itself because it says you can use it it can be used on c221 engine with the 1.781 inch intake valve seats and then you scroll down and then it says it must be used with 1.781 inch valve seat. So it really contradicts itself on the website. I should have known better. So I can't even I can't even put this together right now because this is too big. It doesn't go in here. It goes in, but it doesn't sit right. It sits up and if you look in from the other side and shine a flashlight right here, you can see a gap the whole way around. So I can't even do any of that. The only thing I could do is, you know, put in all the exhaust, but if I'm taking it to a machine shop anyway, and, you know, he's going to have to make these bigger, then I'm kind of at the point where, you know, I might as well get the whole head resurfaced right here, make sure everything's flat and square. I don't know. Steiner, I, I don't, I don't get the point. You know, All States Ag has the actual size intake valves. So it's not a matter that you can't get them. So I'm not sure why they did that to make them bigger. I don't understand. Kind of irritates me. It's my own dumb fault, I guess, because I did read that stuff. But you shouldn't have to change the head. You shouldn't have to do any of that. You should be able to just put new pieces in and go. I don't... So with that... I'm at a standstill with the head. I will have to get in touch with a machine shop and see, see if they can do something about that and go from there. It's probably a good idea anyway, then I can get the head resurfaced and make sure it's true. So I'm just gonna jump onto something else now. This bolt that snapped off. Well, at least something could go right today. And that's a huge plus that that came out. Wonder how hot that is. It's not wonderful. Perfect. Now I just need to get a new bolt for that. And new bolts for these. Well, that looks a lot better. Majority of the back deck's clean. I gotta get down in some of these bolt holes and kind of get where the uh, wipe off a lot of that oil that's laying there. Cause we shouldn't, hopefully, once we're done with everything, shouldn't have that issue anymore. I still do need to get the three point in here and get that worked on. There's so much to do yet. I'm like I said, I'm kind of out of standstill right now. There is some small things I probably could do, but at this point, I need to just order some parts, get in touch with the machine shop, get the head figured out, 
and once that's figured out and everything's assembled there we can put that on and then assembly i think from here on out assembly should start going a little bit faster so until next time thanks for watching subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one